Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Degencia, also known as Degnabbit, and here I am going to be starting a new series. I am going to create a new free-to-play account for the game Epic 7. It is one of my two main games. Um, this and Genshin Impact, as you can see on my channel. And we have been through many collabs back to back. At this point, we had a Full Metal Alchemist one, and now we're finishing up an Espa collab. And now there's like a, a sponsorship for Hollow Live. So we'll see if Epic Seven picks up, especially with the Chinese server opening. But I doubt they'll be watching this. So a lot of things have changed since I made my account three-ish years ago. And I made an alt two years ago to help a friend. And well, let's get into it. Epic Seven is an anime style turn-based RPG. Uses a, a speed bar similar to like older Final Fantasies. You'll see it when you get into combat. Tutorials explain most of it, so we're just going to run down important things. As you can see, my account is rank 25. I am on the end of day two, roughly 10 to 12 hours, depending. It took forever to burn stamina, and I have all of this free stamina they give you. Like, this game drowns you in it, so you, you got plenty of hours, especially at the beginning. So let's start with the first thing. Um, right when you finish the, tu the tutorial, you get this, your selective summon. You have up to 30 tries for 10 pulls to get units you want. Uh, I'm going to pull up the list here in a little bit, but you get to save a 10 pull and then keep rolling if you want to try and fish for an even better one. So I would say out of everything here, so this would be the list you get. You want to get a five star hero. Okay, the artifacts are kind of nice, but th those are bonuses. The hero can really set the pace for your account. Out of every five-star hero, the only ones I would recommend taking from the selective summon are uh, the best one being Iceria, and then the next tier being like uh, Fildred and Ravi, and then after that, maybe Destina. So Destina is um, an Earth Soul Weaver. She does cleansing, she does healing, she does CR pushing. Overall, really nice and one of the best original starting characters. But now you'll, you'll have plenty of healers at the beginning. You're not going to need it. She's more of a like uh, a late game PvP PVE powerhouse. Uh, Vildred is an AOE Earth DPS. He Hits two targets with his S1. His S2 is anytime something dies when he attacks, he does an extra AoE to all targets. And his S3 is AoE to everything. Mildred clears things really fast, and that's about it. He offers us... He's weak against fire units because he can miss. And that's pretty much it. PvP-wise, he's not bad. That's like a bridge. Um, so, like, he follows up and does damage, but for the most part in PvP, he's just a speed imprint. Uh, Ravi is probably a slightly lower tier in PvP now. She's pretty clutch, but for the most part, she's just a fire bruiser. Um, she heals on S1, she stuns on S3 in an AoE, and she does more damage the more she's hit because of her S2 passive. For the most part, she just kind of like eventually tanks through everything in PvE and then kind of does the same in PvP. She kind of needs the 5-star artifact Sigrid Scythe you can see here to excel. That's about it. And then Iceria, well, before we get to Iceria, says we're, we're kind of keeping an eye on he might be good later. He used to be good back in the game came out. Then he fell off for like 2-3 years and now they reworked him. I, I don't think he's worth grabbing right now. But Iceria... She's pretty much the only character in the game with a full skill reset for one unit of your choice, which is absolutely absurd for PvE and has niche uses in PvP, specifically with Moonlight 5-star Dark Corvus. Um, Iceria offers Defense Break and Unbuffable on S3, Defense Break on S1, and then of course the skill reset. So she's pretty much the powerhouse from this point on and one half of like the dynamic duo for PvE. So I always recommend taking Iceria. So you're gonna wanna reroll for a bit, and oh, look at the timing. So we'll talk about this patch missions in a little bit here. So after that, you'll be given opportunities for Moonlight Blessings. 
eventually, I think this is like 1-7, so Moonlight Blessings, you have the choice of six characters. You have Judge Kisei, Arbiter Vildred, Dark Corvus, Ruel of Light, Martial Artist Ken, and Spectre Tenebria. I believe these are six of the original Moonlight heroes in the game, so they're giving everyone a free one. With a few strings attached. Out of all of these, the only one I recommend is Spectre Tenebria. Uh, Judge Kisei is arguably the worst 5 star right now, unfortunately, despite her design and her skills. She just doesn't fit for any usage. Arbiter Vildred kind of got outdated for his usage. He's no For the first time in like 3 years, he's not meta. He's barely even counter meta in PvP. And they didn't even do that by targeting him, honestly. <laughs> it just kind of happened. Arbiter Vildred's pretty much relegated for um, farming, but you don't need him, honestly, with Free Spirit Tyria, which is a free unit I'll talk about. Dark Corvus is the premier, like, guaranteed one person will die once he gets his turn kind of unit in Guild War. I don't think really. RTA, in real-time arena, he's kind of hard to use, and in, I mean, he could probably be used in AI arena. But for the most part, he's just, eventually he'll get to hit really hard, and they've buffed him twice, and he's really nice in those situations he's useful. But that, that late game point is kind of far away. We're all of light. It's kind of funny to say she's basically a worse Destina now that after Destina's rework, but she kind of is. She heals a bit, she cleanses a bit, she can revive like Destina, but Destina has an AoE revive. Ruel's is a single target, full health, immunity revive, or not immunity, and we're invulnerability revive, sorry. So she's not terrible, she's good for late game, but there's better. ML Ken, or Martial Artist Ken, is the original like scourge of pvp but long has he been um outdated anytime something crit him he used to counter for guaranteed crit and like basically one tap them and with that sigurd scythe artifact we mentioned for ravi he's basically unstoppable but now there's too many counters for him and not enough things that will actually trigger him so he doesn't really do much meanwhile specter tenebria has been constantly S tier in like every category. She has built in stealth, so as long as someone is targetable on your team, she cannot be hit outside of AoE or sp super skills that jump straight to her. Her S3 is she nukes a single target, stuns them. If they die, the enemy team gets pushed back. And then her S1 is single target nuke. If you soul burn it, she takes another turn. And when your S3 is on cooldown, you hit two targets and are uncounterable. Oh, and just as an extra bonus, it can poison, which does percent max health at the end of the enemy's turn. Or, I think it's the end. Might be a start. I haven't used poison much. But yeah. So as you can see, once you select it, you'll be given these missions to complete, so you can use them in certain con uh, content or do certain things. Like, you can't even reach 5-star Awaken, which is the red stars. Yellow stars show their rarity or rank. So you can't 5-star Awaken her until you complete this condition. You can't make her a 6-star until you get this condition. You can't enhance her skills until you get this far in the story. And then you can't use them on defense for AI Arena or Guild War until you reach gold, which is fair. And then reset Moonlight's Blessing if you want to pick someone else. And speaking of arena, let's just jump straight in. So it's Sunday night, you're calculating early. You only have access to NPCs. So NPCs come in medium, hard, and I think this is like insane or something. I forgot what it is. Hell, hell. Um, you just clear these. There's like a little text. They're easier than most arena. Normally, uh, I would recommend immediately starting. Just max out your free spirit, Tyria, and your Spectre Tenebri, and just go to town on your opponents. Yeah, for the most part, <clears throat> just jump straight into Arena, clear out the NPCs when you can, it's it's basically free crust, um, push in the regular opponents on Arena as far as you can until you start losing. Don't reset, I would say, unless you're like guaranteed to power up soon. I would lose to one of those players more than like non-stop just to dump my flags to make sure i'm getting my resources every day because these crests matter a lot 
you're gonna need as many of them as you can to buy the free like quote welfare gear the free level 88 gear so just dump all of it but for the most part you're not gonna run into anything too scary in low arena until at least gold you might run into like old meta teams but they're not anything special <clears throat> you'll just pass them in like a week so we got arena and as you can as i mentioned earlier i'm ranked 25 so while well, epic seven's a marathon and not a sprint 25 is the rank i would recommend trying to rush because it unlocks pets pets have passive skills for different content you even get a lobby one but the main reason i recommend getting to 25 is because then you have a pet that lets you do this so you go to content you've cleared before and you get to you see this symbol auto repeat so this game has auto battling you get that really soon like i think literally before you're able to summon or maybe like a ch chapter effort but auto repeat is locked behind pets which is unfortunately at rank 25 which took me probably 10 hours to reach <clears throat> three star pets get you 15 four star gets you 20 five star gets you 30. so if the idea of repeating content more than once at a time before needing your attention again is important i would recommend this also pets will click on chess and click on statues and click on gates in all of your missions so that's honestly a very important feature <laughs> because paying attention while you're doing story or repeating content is not exactly something i'd like to do at 25 you also get garo you get to check his store this is where you'll spend sky stones to refresh late game for bookmarks and stuff for the most part you just only buy bookmarks um let's see you want to join a guild as soon as you can i'm lucky i mean the interface itself wasn't great for looking for a guild but i'm lucky i got one that contacted me in game that's open in invite so you got to join it for content uh guild war is something you do mid game i guess because it requires a specific amount of people to join that's your main income for mystic metals you do it monday wednesday friday world boss is pve content you just throw the highest power units you have in there for free rewards ancient inheritance is a seasonal one that has excellent gear um doesn't matter where you are as a player you just need armor sets you don't even need stats for your units to be in that one uh aid you just request for what you need at the beginning if you're in a low level guild i would say just put in whatever triangle ruin is for that day triangles will probably and be in way higher stock than the, the little like lesser circle ruins for mid to late game you want to ask for these claws it's basically infinite after that first one uh you want to donate what you can you get crescent armbands to buy stuff in your member shop Basically, everything's a good investment except for maybe Victoria's Flag. Guide to Decision takes a bit of effort. Um, you want to buy out all the monthly resets. The Molas, for sure. Because Molas are really scarce. I think you get 7 a week at most. And you need, like, 30 for a 5-star character. To fully max out. You get 3 for free for maxing out their friendship. But no, that's about it. These Mystic Metals you can get later. I would not buy anything else with armbands. I would use my on Catalyst and this random conversion chest if I had extra. And then extra extra will be Artifact Charms. Like these roll in late game if you're in an active guild. So don't worry too much. Try to do your weekly missions to help your guild out. You all get these rewards. So it's great. Alright, we went over guilds. We went over arena. We went over pets. Let's go over what to do if you don't know what to do. You get an adventure path here. Adventure path gives you missions. Just complete them, get rewards. Straightforward. Um, <clears throat> your main PvE goal will be to complete 10-10 or 1- uh, Sorry, story level uh, episode 1. You want to do 10-10 for your rewards. You'll get a bonus uh, extra summons and stuff. And 
I mean, honestly, I was kind of shocked at how low the gear requirement is because, like, I didn't upgrade much past the mandatory stuff. Um, you're going to run into a hard part at, like, 9-1 with the final boss being cigarettes, and then again at 9-2 with cigarette again at the end. And then you're going to fight against Archdemon Shadow at the end of 10-10. And all of that can just be cheesed by having, like, veteran friends use their unit. Like, I added my main account. My unit literally soloed the boss <laughs> without, like, worrying. That's how low level the first episode is. But those are the only three points where you'll probably actually struggle with clearing contents. Every other mission will be easy. <clears throat> and then you just want to... Uh, let me show you on the map... Which one has it? So you'll see this little symbol. These are Breath of Orbises. You'll... I only went out of my way for one. You do want three. So you want to use one here. I would say on the left, Cradle of Life, on your main Heart of Orbis. Mainly because it increases the, the storage. And what I cared about was I only had to check this every 12 hours. That's my priority. Try to main it every 12 hours because I don't want to check this more than I have to. Then high command. I put one into the left, one into the right. Barracks and administration. Just to unlock these missions you saw pop up earlier. It costs one stamina for 10 coins, one stamina for 10 crests. And that's that adds up. You'll need the charms, the <clears throat> ancient coins for ring and neck charms. You'll need the conquest points for the gear and the stamina every day other than that it's like you can upgrade your your gear farming i'll talk about this uh, steel workshop later probably and the alchemist steeple later that stuff's kind of a luxury for early game forest of souls is definitely a luxury this is where you just get free uh <clears throat> xp and um oh, not awakening uh level ranking up Phantasmas, like special dogs you just feed. And then you'll get your weekly mola every Monday. Aside from that, that's it. Uh, key thing in this shop, there is a special... Where is it? This one, rank up pack one. So you don't actually have to buy this to get the rewards. You can see I already claimed these. I didn't buy it. You buy it, you get size sky stones. But every five ranks up to 30... You get rewards. Make sure you claim this in the shop. I don't really see this get brought up a lot, but this one is definitely one of the best things you can learn about. Uh, transmit stones. Eventually, you'll you'll get a lot of these as rewards. Sometimes you get it from uh, you get it from selling units. You get a gold transmit stone every twenty summons, I believe. Outside of Mystic and Moonlight, because Moonlight has its own pity, and Mystic does too. And always buy Galaxy bookmarks. Every 20 pulls, you're guaranteed a 4 or 5 star. And aside from that, some of the 3 stars are the best in the game. You'll, we'll talk about those later. 4 to 5 star hero summon tickets kind of a bait. You want to use your silvers for the weekly mola, you get 2. Uh, luxuries are Giga Phantasma. And then Ego Fragment, which your duplicates in this game give you imprints. Imprints affect your team. Concentrations affect the unit itself. There's some that really stand out. This is more of a late game thing. You need to get duplicates to use it in the first place. Everything else is luxury. Powder of knowledge. This is where artifacts come in. You can... This is their version of a pity. Like, there's no artifact pities. There's only unit pities. You're not guaranteed it no matter how much you pull. Eventually, you'll pull enough artifacts to just buy it. Bottle of Knowledge is every rotation. <clears throat> you can use it on any artifact except for the guild ones. So I would recommend on anything that has like a chance to proc that maxes it out like this one, the Espo one for Karina. It maxes out at 75 at rank 1 and to max limit rank it to get to 100%. That's the only way it'll be 100. Meanwhile, this artifact is just a luxury. Like it increases the secondary effect. And then eventually you'll rotate like different ones. You can just buy them straight up if you need them or if you're unlucky. Friendship, you'll buy the stamina every day. You'll buy the flags every day for your arena. You gotta maintain those crests. Labyrinth, you'll 
by these bug charms late game and pretty much just only on charms from that point on. <laughs> uh, Cress, these triumph or unknown slates are imprints for any unit. So these try to get every season if you can. Get the Molagora every week, get the stamina every day, and then the welfare gear. There's a few in here we'll be going over as time passes when we need them. <clears throat> uh, we have the Epic Pass here, which is just a battle pass that happens sometimes. Take what you want. It doesn't cost money, it costs uh, Sky Stones. So. Just as a word of caution or notice, skins you do not buy go to the store, and then it costs like $30 a skin. So I would recommend, if you want to get it cheap, just get it for the 900 Sky Stones. Aside from that, make sure you do your events every day. I have all this extra stamina. I literally have enough to probably play for like another day if I wanted to, but I'm. Uh, it's been a hunt weekend, so I'm kind of busy on my main account. And then you have events. If this head hunting is still here, I hope... You have access to it. You get a free win my five star of your choice besides like the last five to release, which is huge. There's plenty of tier lists out there. Um, I don't know. I, I just to name a few off the top of my head. Conqueror Lilius is really good. Um, Lionheart Sermia is really good. <clears throat> if you care about PvP and you don't need another one for mid mid game. Um, Briar, Thorn, Witch, Iceria is really good. Stuff like that. And then everything in the point shop is huge. Like this bottle maxes out a character immediately to 6 star. You got Catalyst, you got Charms. These gear things are kind of bait. Those are the last things I would buy. You have another Slate, you have some Mola, you have Friendship things. And then, of course, like... If you started it during Espa, like, this is easily the best thing. These are free summons that you have no, like, connection to. Like, you don't need to save bookmarks because these are only usable on their banners. So I've just been hail marrying. And I ended up getting Karina, which I'm kind of upset about because I'd rather have more three or four stars. Because I don't plan on using units I can't access normally for this. But yeah, so you have these daily things of Arky. And then you're going to have, like, um, this, this one's also for Espa, but... Uh, you're gonna have usually one of these. There's always one web event going on, like every two, three week period. Make sure you do it. You get stamina, and then you get random rewards for completing the event tied to it. Um, oh, here's this one. So when you start, you also have these. They give you extra rewards for completing things. This one's story. This one's upgrading your Breath of Orbis. As you can see, there's 12. And then this one's for like imprinting your Ross. This is how they teach you imprints and they just give you rewards. What is this? Oh man, I forgot this existed. So the Molagora challenge, you just have to complete these things and they give you a bunch of enhancement things. So this is great, like all of these different missions. And then when you're done, they just give you a lot. So this one I believe has three difficulties, easy, medium, hard. And it's just plenty of rewards. I think it's something like a hundred Molagoro when you're done. Then you have this one, Hunt. So once you complete a Hunt level 6 or higher, you'll be given three options. You can either do a Wyvern event, a Golem event, or a Banshee event. You get all three, but you have to do them in order. If you start one, you cannot cancel it. You have to finish it to get to the other one. So we're going to immediately pick Wyvern, and it's going to give us Sigrid for free. And by doing this whole event, it literally gives us everything we need to max out Sigrid for the job. Uh, aside from that, that's pretty much it. Uh, I do recommend there are two stops every day you should make, especially if, if you have spare gold. One is 3-4 in regular story, episode one. You want to hop in. Just walk down a bit. And da -da. go north and keep an eye out here for the goblin see this goblin click him and he has a little store buy out the charms you're never going to be able to afford this gear and you really should not want to <laughs> um so buy out all of these charms they're marked up like 50 percent, but that's not terrible charms are really scarce and it's 
really obnoxious leveling gear. Like, gearing in this game is literally the whole endgame. So that's our first stop every day. Our second stop every day will be in the Labyrinth. I'm, I think all the other late game ones tell you where he is, or at least the newest one. But I always go to Tyrell uh, 3, 1-3. Oh, where am I going? Go to this one. So you start up here, I would go down to this one. And then we're just going to go east. Hoochie's going to be in the next enter section where we stop. <clears throat> Sometimes this enemy team doesn't even spawn here. That's pretty sick. I know 1-3 and 1-1 are the two preferred ones. I just go to 1-3. And then you just talk to Hoochie. I got really lucky. I have a bunch of charms in here. These are all regular price, so I would say buy them. And yeah, gold at least early game will be really easy for you. Like, I have a ridiculous amount of gold. But late game, everything costs gold, so you gotta be careful. And then the little lobby pet kind of helps you, gives you gift every day. Now for sky stones, two things to do immediately. I maxed out my inventory, because inventory management is really annoying in this game like they, they even made this separate one because i guess their engine doesn't support it in the regular one and then but it's really nice the engine's really nice artifacts i'll probably max later for the most part i'm not gonna care about it some notable artifacts while i'm here you want adamant shield if you get it for four stars great for tanks this three star one ancient sheath you should definitely keep like multiple copies or max out some at least so like Every S1 does bonus damage guaranteed. There is very niche units that will use it late game, but early game, this one's really nice. Uh, Aureus is probably the de facto tank artifact. Tried to, I have like seven maxed out on my main account, which is probably overkill, but it's nice. Curse Compass is niche for PvP. Tried to keep one. And any five star artifact, five and four star ones, tried to keep at least one. Uh, it's up to you if you want to max them. Some like this one, I don't recommend maxing them. <clears throat> you can just keep one copy, plus 15. Maxing it's your stats, honestly. And then this one's free with your tier, yeah. <clears throat> Everything else is kind of... Four or five stars, you'll, you'll get the hang of it. Like, if it says damage, it's probably good. So now let's go over... Recruiting. So we have connections. These are all free units you can get. If it says hot, they're really good for PvE, probably. So the Rena here is one of the best PvE carries. Her missions are absolutely terrible to do. You got 20 dispatch missions, and then you still have a specialty change to do later. So start her as soon as you can. Angelica is the best healer out of the box. Unfortunately, you don't get her until rank 30, but that's fine. And Furious here, it says episode 2, 3-10. He's the best debuffer for Wyvern. We're going to be rushing him, and he's getting some PvP welfare gear. Hazel is one of the best um, fire soul weavers. She has a very specific niche, and we're going to be getting her as well. Uh, Elson is a healer. I don't know what he's actually good for anymore. I heard he was really good on release, but not much, so I might get it later. Jack is an okay healer for Earth at the beginning, but most healer slots are not required to be a typing. Like, Hazel is a special exception because of the specialty change forcing her into it, but aside from that, it's not much. Silk is not used much, Kartuga is not used much, and he requires 800,000 gold. Crozé is not bad for Wyvern. He's a pretty solid tank, but for our plans, we, we won't be needing a tank. We have a healer to tank. Maya is, as far as I know, never used. <laughs> Yuna is pretty cool. Um, a niche AoE unit <clears throat> support hybrid. You get a lot of free stuff from her memory event, so you definitely will be going back. I mean, that's really up to you if you want her. Kwazu's from 2-10. He's an okay debuffer. I don't really notice he does. I never see him and use him. Anna, you get from episode 3, <clears throat> 2-8. She's very good for the niche PvE they made her for. She's good for Earth Expedition, and she's good for Secretary Vera in uh, Labyrinth. But that's about it. She's also good for Azimonic, I guess. But... We'll get to that in like the other episodes. 
Free Spirit Tyria, you get immediately after chapter episode one, chapter two, dash two. She is fully loaded. Yeah, fully maxed out skills. She comes in at four star. The Adventurer's Path gives you a bunch of materials to max her out. <clears throat> she does massive AoE, comes with an artifact that gives her attack up when she kills something. She she's the reason Vildred got like bumped. Montmorency is complete garbage initially, but she's easily the best healer and cleanser after her specialty chain. And then Alexa, one of the best Wyvern units, but we get a free cigarette, so it's up to you. If you don't want to use cigarette, I guess, but I mean, you're literally handed it. You might as well use a use cigarette. Alexa's like comparable at late game levels of gear. And then <clears throat> after connections, I mentioned it. We have specialty change. So these are special upgrades, like special talent trees and one skill upgrades for three star units. I already started the Montmorency one because it makes her S3 um, cleanse before healing <laughs> and giving immunity. And then you have to do these missions and then you see the skill tree. It, this is why Montmorency is super strong. Like, look at all these additional stats. Look at the health, look at damage suffered and stuff and all of these ability buffs. These are used for every character in here. Montmorency is definitely one I would recommend. Uh, when you unlock this, I believe it's like halfway through episode one, you get a free Clurry. Clurry is one I would recommend. I basically recommend almost every knight in here. Like Ross, the main character, becomes a top tier unit for every bit of content. You will always find usages for Ross. So get Ross as soon as you can. Clurry is nice for specific content. I'm going to be using her for both PvE and PvP. Arena is good for PvE. Hazel's good for PvE. Carrot's good for both PvE and PvP. She's not top, top tier, but she's like good. Pearl Horizon's really niche for PvP. Helga, I'm going to be using Helga and Ruzid as a combo. They both have specialty changes, as you can see here. They're both really good for PvE. <clears throat> Rima, I tried making work. I don't see a reason to use Rima unless you think they're cute. Um, Alexa is unfortunately locked behind a summer limited story. Despite making her better than Cigarette with this, I guess. But I'm not going to care about that. Axe God, unfortunately, they reworked him and he ended up being worse for PvP. Ruzid, I already mentioned. Rickerus, he has a very specific niche like game for PvE, but he's not that great. Butchicore Inquisitor, similar situation. He has a special passive where you cannot just one shot him outside of certain circumstances. He's pretty solid for PvP, but for PvE, he's that makes him really nice, especially for Ancient Inheritance. He can solo a certain boss in there. Um, if you ever go Knight, unfortunately. <laughs> Warrior, Warrior Soul Weaver is kind of the meta. I know Rangers and Thieves is somewhere there. Mages and Knights are kind of there. Wanda, this Wanda is easily like the most accessible, easy one shot against evasion units. In PvP, Doris is the premier light healer for PvP, especially AI ones like Normal Arena and Guild War, because she just completely eats damage from dark types. And she has great cleansing and healing and buffs. Carmine Rose, I will specifically be building for <clears throat> a, let me think, it's the light expedition boss and for golem i guess but mainly for the light expedition boss pillis is easily one of the top specialty changes she's one of the best tanks in the game as i believe she has a dispel an aoe dispel a taunt on s1 and s3 a aoe barrier a passive that gives defense and defense up she's good against counter and evasion and then arrow weld the literal best tank in the game at this point of the as this video is made they just reworked nor they gave her this chain she has high effectiveness high effectiveness or effective resistance she has strips everywhere in her kit so the enemy never gets buffs she has a stun she has <clears throat> damage redirect aureus is the best or de facto tank artifact because it redirects damage arrow has redirect as a buff 
So if they can't strip it, she redirects damage so she can have an artifact on top of that. She gives shields to all other light units on your team. She's just stacked. She's super good. Glenn is... Glenn is... They just kind of made him better at what he did already. He, he has good hit chance and extinction, I believe, in his kit. And that's all he does. So he's like a niche PvP unit if you like him. That's all of them. <clears throat> uh, so let's... I believe that's it. You can kind of clear hunt using whatever. Like I've just been using that. Do labyrinth and challenge abyss every day. Try to clear what you can. I think that's everything for early game. Oh, another thing you can use your gems for. You can make teams. Like I don't think you really need more than 10. But now that they changed labyrinth, you can definitely make more. I think after the sixth one it starts costing sky stones but honestly it's not too bad and yeah that's it i hope you guys enjoy epic seven i'll be making a follow-up later when i guess i get into hunts to see how far i can push maybe one for episode two or unrecorded history thank you for joining me and happy new year